For the benefit of those who are joining us for the very first time, I just wish to tell you that this committee was put together one week to the day. And it comprises key stakeholders, uh, Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Health, who are the drivers, Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Transport, and other partners that we've been able to work together with to get where we are. Now, we do all recall that uh, when we had our inaugural a meeting last Sunday, the chairperson, who is the CS Minister of Health, Honorable Mutai Kabwe, did promise that today we are going to be here to be able to see how much has been done in as far as preparing this facility is concerned. You have seen by yourself, and indeed, I would wish to add that this facility is just an element within a cocktail of other measures that we have as a country to prepare ourselves in any eventuality in as far as uh, this corona issue is concerned. And therefore, I would wish to bring the CS Minister of Health to brief you and give an update. As well. We are going to introduce, uh, but before we get there, I just need to also to inform the media that uh, at the tail end of the briefing, you are going to get an opportunity to be able to ask questions. Please remember to state your name and the media house that you represent. And at this moment, I would like to invite PS Ministry of Health to be able to introduce the others. Thank you very much, uh, the Fourth of State, our Cabinet Secretaries uh, who are present here, the Ministry of Health, Mr. Mutai Kagwe, Honorable Mutai Kagwe, the CS, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, my colleagues from various ministries, Ministry of Broadcasting, Public Works, and uh, all the other colleagues from the Ministry of Health and the entire fraternity that has been working closely in a one government approach to address the matter of coronavirus. Uh, we are very pleased today to have the multi-agency team that is led by the Minister of Health. We are also very pleased to have in our midst the board members of this hospital, Bagasi Hospital, led by their chairman, together with the NCA of this place and the rest of the board members. The Kenyatta National Hospital Management, led by their CEO, Dr. Kamuri, who have worked tirelessly together with the team at the Ministry of Health, led by the Director General in, of the Ministry of Health, together with his team in public health, disease surveillance, and uh, all the other departments that are involved 
in emergency response work. So I wish to recognize also the other state uh, corporations. The CEO of the Kenya Civil Aviation is here. I'm sure the CEO of Kenya Airways is here or not represented. All these are members of the Task Multi-Agency Task Force. CAS gave us a challenge as Ministry of Health, working together with Public Works to deliver this hospital within a week. And CAS, even as you come to address uh, the people here, we want to, I want to sincerely appreciate the teams that have worked tirelessly, that Waziri, uh, we have delivered to the multi-agency task what was to be done today. So with those very, very few remarks, allow me now to welcome the Cabinet Secretary, Mutai Kagwe, who is the chair of the multi-agency task force on coronavirus to now address uh, all of us. Waziri. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Is it afternoon? Good afternoon. Um, thank you very much indeed for coming to this event. Um, I will have a few things to say clearly, but um, before I do so, I want to recognize uh, my colleague, the Minister for Foreign Affairs, the Secretary for Foreign Affairs. I'm still in the minister mood, as you know, I'm a brand new minister. <laughs> uh, and I want to recognize uh, Richard Omamo, and I would like uh, to just say a few words. <laughs> well, I thank you, um, my colleague, uh, Honorable Kagwe, uh, for allowing me this opportunity to uh, express my gratitude to the team that has worked extremely hard in kitting up this hospital and making it available to Kenyans. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for meeting your deadline and for showing commitment uh, to tackling uh, this worldwide challenge. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, last Friday, the President, His Excellency the President of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, formed an emergency committee to deal with the issue of the uh, coronavirus. From the outset, this is not a Kenyan problem. This is a global phenomenon. Let me also say, this is a challenge. We are challenged. Globally, we are challenged. But let me also add that this is not something to lose hope about. I think there is so much information going out there that sometimes we are going the wrong direction and we need to clarify a number of things so that uh, a, Kenyans are more comfortable about the steps that the government has taken. Number one, the establishment of the Emergency Response Committee was in the 28th. What we were told to do, among other things, is that within seven days, this facility was supposed to be ready for treatment of cases. This is not an isolation facility. This is an isolation and treatment facility. And is the only one at the moment that we have around here. And I want to sincerely, sincerely thank the team that has worked day and night from the national youth the Ministry of Energy, the Ministry of Public Works, everybody has been here. I want to thank our donors, the ones who have been working with us ceaselessly to ensure that um, this facility is ready. We have uh, a national contingency plan to guide the, us in terms of prioritizing and preparedness. We have an emergency response unit that is going around everywhere that if there is any information about anything in any part of this country, we are preparing ourselves so that we are able to respond immediately. So we have activated the emergency operation center that is closely monitoring the evolution of the outbreak in China and the rest of the world in order for us to keep tabs with what we should do and to know what other countries are doing and therefore to do the same or even better. Let me also add, 
that at all points of entry, at all points, all points of entry in this country, there is mandatory screening. Now, there are those who may not realize that you are being screened because sometimes we are using thermal scanners. So I have heard people say, I passed by the place and I wasn't screened. You were screened. You, didn't, you just didn't know that you were. So uh, let me make it clear. Nobody is going to come into Kenya without screening. On our, at the airports, at the ports, we are making arrangements even in other areas where people walk into Kenya, let alone fly into Kenya, in Busia, in Namanga, and other uh, centers. In that respect also, we are working with the East African, East African community. This morning, we met with doctors from uh, the five East African countries in my office, uh, and, this, and this is all to work together with other nations. This is not a singular nation activity. We are sensitizing and training throughout. There isn't a single day that we are not training some part of in some, training in some part of this country. We have we have trained over 1,100 health workers. We have deployed them in Jomo Kenyatta International Airport and other areas. And we are also sensitizing and cascading this training all the way to the community, to the community levels. We have procured sufficient uh, personal protective equipment um, for our workers. Let's never forget the first line of defense is our workers and we are making sure that our workers are properly protected. The, Dr. Kamole was explaining to you as we came in, how this facility is going to work. You can see the, that it's being secured. The entrances will be from the other side, completely different entrance from the rest of the, of the facility, just so that uh, there isn't any possibility of uh, anybody, anybody coming close or anybody coming in contact who is not supposed to, or civilians coming in contact. I want to mention that we are closely working with uh, the World Health Organizations, we are closely working with WHO, we are working with Africa CDC, and we are also working with uh, the US CDC amongst others. Members of the public are encouraged to remain vigilant as the risk is still high, and are advised to continue taking precautionary measures at all times, at all times. Let's maintain basic hand and respiratory hygiene and safe food practices. We launched a free, we'll be sending information to your mobile phones for free under an arrangement we have made with the Safaricom. So everybody is, get, is going to be getting information about the disease, what to do, washing your hands, avoid close contact with the people showing any sign of this. Let's not panic. Let's not get to the point where you can't even uh, say jumbo to me. We have uh, temporarily lift, lifted the ban uh, so that um, the ban on the flight uh, from Italy, just one flight, to come to Kenya to lift the people who had been locked in when we banned the flights from uh, Verona and the rest of the Verona and um, Northern Italy, Milan. But there are Arab people who are locked in in Malindi, about 800 of them. So what we have done is that we have allowed a flight to come in empty with nobody inside to come into the airport. There will be nobody who will disembark from that flight and the passengers will get in and then uh, have a, a safe flight home. Normally we send our visitors in much better version than that. But of course, I'm sure they all understand the circumstances under which we are, we are operating. Further, the government has with immediate effect banned all meetings and conferences 
of an international nature, repeat, of an international nature in Kenya. That is, if, an interna if a conference involves people traveling from Europe, traveling from the rest of the world in the Middle East and so on, in a conference or meetings with more than 15 people, we have asked that we postpone and suspend that at least for the next 30 days. The government has also issued a travel advisory to all Kenyans to avoid non-essential travel to high-risk countries for conferences of meetings where, again, there is going to be more than 15 people gathering. I would like to make it clear that events that are only for Kenyans, that don't involve people from outside Kenya, are continuing normally. The Beyond Zero Race, for example, on Sunday, we will be there, we will be running with uh, Her Excellency the First Lady. We are, we are out backing her, and I invite all of you also. But events that involve persons from outside Kenya are the ones we are referring to. And I particularly want to say how sorry we are that uh, the Kenya Open uh, that was supposed to be at Karen because, uh, because a European tour that you involve Europeans, people coming from Italy, Germany, and other centers, that cannot continue. And we have to postpone it for the period that I have said, for at least a month, so that we can monitor and see and weigh how things are going on. Now, in addition to that, as the, as the committee is working, we are cascading our work all the way downwards. We are going to work with the other sectors. The Ministry of Transport is going to be working very closely with Matato. There will be, there will be, next week, there will be meetings with Matato owners, bus owners, as well, bus associations, and other modes of transport, including the border borders, so that we can, we can begin to work with them to ensure that certain levels of hygiene are being observed even as we transport our people. You all know what it would mean if a person in a matatu was, was infected. So we want um, material and communication to go to even the drivers of matatus, to conductors of matatus, so that they can see and observe and note if there is anything challenging before people vote um, in conjunction with the Ministry of Trade and Finance. The Ministry of Health is also engaging the business community. We are quite aware and quite conversant with the economic, with the economic effects that um, what is going on around the world is going to have on us in Kenya. The tourism sector is going to be very severely affected. We are working with uh, organizations, global organizations, such as the World Bank, to see how we can mitigate the economic downfall and the economic effects that we know for sure are coming our way. And the county governments, through their respective governors, have been tasked also to ensure that necessary isolation wards in all level four and level five hospitals are set up and ready for use by the 15th of this month. In the next few days, the committee will be moving around. Individuals in various ministries are moving around the country. We are working very closely with the county governments, recognizing that health is a devout function but also knowing that in this fight, there is no national or county government. Indeed, there is no countries. This is a fight, you know, that is going to involve the cooperation of all of us around the globe. The ministry, in addition to this facility that you have just seen, we are also working very hard to establish additional treating treatment facilities we are exploring the possibility of utilizing the Kenyatta University Teaching, Referral and Research Hospital.
to see whether we can now expand so that in the event, just in the event, that this facility, this facility is overwhelmed, we hope not, we pray not, but in the event that that happens, we will have another 300 bed capacity that we are currently working on at uh, the Kenyatta uh, University Teaching Referral and Research Hospital. So I, I thank you all very much. I want to say a special thank you to the colleagues in the committee who have been working. I want to say a special thank you to all the doctors, all the nurses, all the clinical officers, all the health workers who are preparing themselves, who are working diligently to train themselves so that they can be our army in the fight against this, um, uh, this disease. As I said, let's not panic. Let's just observe. Let's just observe what we are advised by the Ministry of Health to, to observe, by the WHO, but there should not be panic. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I also want to say the following, and I said it at the meeting with the, the Council of Governors uh, meeting the other day. We must not, and I repeat, I want to implore our colleagues in Kenya. This nation has always been known as an, a welcoming country. We have always been known as people who care, as people who are friendly, and people who welcome our visitors. And I want to say, let us not suffer from xenophobia. Let us not profile individuals, particular individuals from the Asian subcontinent, from the Asian continent, where we think that everybody who looks in a certain way or behaves in a certain way must have this disease. I want to put this thing in perspective so that we understand exactly what it is. There are 70,000, a province where now 70,000 people, 79 the last count of people in China who are affected. And there will be probably more coming. But let's not forget, there are 1.5 billion people. Do the maths, subtract, and you can see how many people, what the percentage is. So please, please, Kenyans, let's be friendly. Let's take care of people. We should be sympathetic. And I also added, we as African people are the last people who should be discriminating or mistreating anybody. We understand discrimination so much because we have been discriminated on so much that at this time, when we don't have to, let's not do that. I have mentioned that um, there will be WhatsApp messages being sent to your phones. And this starts, I think, immediately, Esther. And the final thing is the issue of self-quarantine. There has been a misguided notion, a misguided notion, that even under extreme circumstances, the government will be able, not this government, any government, we will be able to just take a whole village or a whole town and take them somewhere for quarantine. That, ladies and gentlemen, is simply not possible. So we need to understand this concept of self-quarantine. And we have practiced it before, even in our own homes. When you've got a very bad cold that you think you can infect your family with, you don't go holding your family, you, you protect them. You say, I don't want to shake hands because I've got a very bad cold. This is what we must understand. That a time can come when you have to self-quarantine. Because if a whole town is affected, you can't move everybody. So when we say, and when we ask people, please practice self-quarantine, it doesn't mean that we are not going to monitor. It does not mean that we are not keeping track of everybody who has got even the slightest uh, sign, but let us not, um, let's not say that say of quarantine is not a possibility. Read and understand, watch and understand. Just get a grip of the fact that self-quarantine is a practice 
that is that involves people it involves citizen responsibility it involves visitor responsibility so that we are all able to exercise self discipline in self quarantine finally we have also said and asked that uh, government officers traveling outside this country cannot do so if they are going to areas that have been uh, that have been uh, said to be affected areas Italy and the other ones therefore there is a ban to travel to any of those places maybe for conferences maybe for meetings unless it is absolutely necessary unless it is crucial and absolutely necessary and of course the persons who are supposed to clear travel in this country will be aware of that absolute necessity Uh, the messaging is being done as we speak from the Ministry of Health on your mobile. If it hasn't come to us, it will come soon. And don't start criticizing me for jamming the, the internet. Now, the other final issue is to do with sending false messages. Let me make it clear. It is a criminal offense. It is a criminal offense to forward a message which is not true and which you know is not true and which you and which you might suspect may not be true it is a criminal offense and you can get arrested and fined and jailed so good people please send a message out and this is so important this is so important because if indeed we had a problem and the government was sending out messages, then people will just believe, they'll think it is one of those fake ones. So please, I am urging our citizens, do not send false messages, do not forward messages, unless you are absolutely certain that that message is from the Ministry of Health. Do not send messages, unless they are from Ministry of Health, and if indeed they are from Ministry of Health, then uh, the, they will probably have arrived to you anyway via WhatsApp. Over the next uh, couple of days, we will be mobilizing support for the county governments. We will be sending additional support from the national government of about 5,000 5, additional personnel a lot of them to assist, a lot of, a lot of them have been trained in the service, some of them from uh, the national youth, who are going to be trained, community, community health workers, additional people to go and support the counties um, because of the overwhelming training and other works that we think they are facing. In addition to that, we have been mobilizing uh, mobile clinics, which we are going to start dispatching in the next 10 days to the various counties again for the same for the same reason so all in all what i can say is that we are not we are not leaving anything to chance we are working day and night so and please those of you who are going to say i had even this morning somebody talking about we don't have sufficient this we don't have sufficient the other Please don't speak on behalf of the government in just, uh, you know, regular interviews on TV. Do not speak on behalf of the government to, to indicate how many beds or how many gowns we have. I am a time to come together as citizens this is a time for patriotism a lot more a lot more than criticism i thank you
Yes, thank you very much. First and foremost, this is a 120 bed capacity, but and we have taken every measure. When we took you round, we even showed you the windows that uh, are being used in the most critical, the most critical areas. Uh, but I would like to ask um, the direct, acting director general for health to come and say just a few technical issues about what we have done here. Dr. Amos. Thank you, Azini. Uh, we have ensured that uh, this place is totally isolated from the rest of the facility. And when we are taking you around, it's only that the windows were like that because there are no patients in the facility. Once we have an individual case, the ne necessary measures that we are going to put in place are totally different. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me also add that if we didn't show you the entire, the entire facility. There are rooms that have already been fumigated. And I would also like to assure you, even where we went through, they are going to fumigate after we leave. Next. Thank you. My name is Purity from the Pina Protective Corporation. I have two concerns. Uh, one is with regard to what my colleague has said. Maybe in terms of capacity, some of the, you said it's not just an isolation center, but also a treatment center. So uh, maybe you can talk about the kind of equipment that we have, personnel that we have that are moving forward. Then number two, the status of us being a student in China currently. Okay, on the issue, let me start with the. Um, the issue of uh, the Kenyan students in China, I want to address that. Then I'm going to ask uh, uh, Dr. Kamori to talk about the equipment that, that is here. We have said before, and we are saying again, that the matter of uh, our students in Yuhan and other areas is a matter that is still under consideration within the emergency uh, committee. But let me just take you through a small, a, small, a, a small route for you. What we are talking about right now is that our students, no, no Kenyan student, we do not have any information of any Kenyan student being unwell. Our Kenyan students are in quarantine. Put this in perspective. Each individual is okay. Everybody is well as we speak. Now, what are, we, what are we proposing that we do? We get those individuals who are okay and safe and unwell, and, and they are okay, nobody is sick. You take them all together, you take, through, you take them through wherever you go through to take them to a facility. You bring all of them together. You bring them together. Nobody knows at that point who passed through where. You put them in an aircraft all together and you fly them into Kenya. When they get here, they come through the airport, you have again got to quarantine them somewhere else, together, all over again. And we have to weigh these options. We have to ask ourselves, which is the more intelligent option? We have seen all over the world, people making bad decisions. You say we are, go in, we are going to bring our people home, we are going to lift our people from uh, ships in the high seas and other cruise, cruise ships and guess what has happened? So people, let's not assume that just because other countries are doing something, it must be the right thing to do. They must be making smarter, smarter uh, strategic moves than we are. Let's not look down upon ourselves. Maybe we are the smarter ones. Uh, the, the facility has all the equipment you need from uh, handling a basic patient up to ICU setting. You can see for those people who went in, we have also ventilators, monitors, defibrillators, 
uh, we have infusion pumps, even we can actually run the patient in remote. If you have seen some of the gadgets we, we, we have. We also have all diagnostic facility. We have mobile x-rays inside here. We have mobile ultrasound. We have um, also a lab, full-fledged lab, and also we have all the drugs and also the equipment. So, so disposal. And even waste disposal, we have, you have seen, we have also put even a standby power supply and oxygen supply and also a shredder so that even the waste that we produce here will also will be incinerated from this facility. So basically, we have put all the structures in place. Thank you. Uh, you know there's an international conference uh, lakini wananchi tunasema tuna goja kidogo wewe tunasema kwa ufupi serikali yenu iko tayari kuwalinda against corona virus iko tuko tayari msiogope msibabaike tunafanya chochote ambacho ni lazima tufanye ndio wananchi wetu wasije wakapata hii ugonjwa vile vile tunataka kuomba kwa sababu tusifikirie ati kuna kitu kikubwa tumefanya mpaka wakati huu ndio tusije na hii tusikue na hii ugonjwa hapa tunataka kusema tunamshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa vile anmeendelea kutulinda na tunaomba tuendelee hivyo hivyo the last two questions Okay. 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 Kama hiyo gate imewekwa kuelekea gate ya shule pale watoto wanatokea. Tunaomba sisi hatupingi lakini tunauliza kama hiyo gate inaweza kusongeshwa pale chini kidogo kwa sababu hata leo asubuhi watoto wanaangalia juu. Tuna support lakini tunauliza tu kama inaweza kuondolewa hapo ipelekwe hapo chini kidogo. Asante sana. Okay. Uh, I, I want mama nataka kukuambia kuhakikisha dakika hii kama hivyo ndio mnaona mnaogopa hapo hiyo ume that's a proposal and in in, uh, in parliament we we'll, uh, we ask as many of that opinion say i aye uh, the opinion say ne the eyes have it the gate will be moved <laughs> Now, in the event we have an outbreak, who takes up the course, the burden of treatment, in terms of medication? Uh, the question, if you didn't hear, the question was in the event. In the, can you hear me? In the event of uh, this outbreak, what happens? The government of Kenya takes responsibility. And we have a huge contingency plan for that measure. Maybe the, the last points. ones, the gentleman at the back. My question is, we are talking so much about what has been done in this hospital. There they go again. Do we have enough materials for self-protection? Like the masks yes. and uh, I have, I have, yes. I have already indicated. I had already read that we have got sufficient material. We have got sufficient cover for our for our doctors. We are ready. And let me also say something. Some of these things, some of these things, you cannot stock in massive, massive quantity because they are available. So you don't also want to have inventory, you know, huge quantities of inventory when we want this disease to come down and we are hoping 
over the next one month it will start tilting downwards. So we also don't want to have stores and stores of material that uh, we are not likely to use. But we have enough for any eventuality. Some of these things also expire. So we will get them as they become necessary and they are available. But as far as other materials, test kits and so on and so forth, we are ready. We have. Uh, let me start with. Um, let me start with the one about uh, maternity. Yes, we have made plans for that. We have made plans uh, for even some to move into Kenyatta, and we have sufficient capacity for um, for maternity for maternity use in Kenya. In fact, in some in some place in some places, the problem is the opposite. Secondly, as far as uh, the quantity of drugs is concerned, I think that's what you asked, Yamutai. Yes, I said we have enough. We have enough drugs. And we are continuing to receive. In fact, even now, you might even witness more drugs, you know, coming in as we speak right here, which we are going to get into in a few, in a few minutes. I am not, we are not worried about uh, our capacity in terms of drugs. The, the, the German couple, they were taken, they were isolated, they were tested, and, it is, and they are negative. So far, we do not have a positive um, case in Kenya. My name is Andiro from Metropole TV. From a business perspective, we know China is like the manufacturing hub of the world. Manufacturing has slowed down. What plans do we have to ensure that everything we import from China, we have reservoir or exploring different markets? Thank you so much. Thank you. As I said, as I said earlier, this thing is gone. What is gone? As I mentioned earlier, the Ministry of Trade and the Ministry of Finance are uh, meeting in the, in the coming week to start addressing that very question. But let's not also forget something, that a lot of the goods that come, for, um, uh, that come to Kenya don't come by air. A lot of them are seaborne. That's one. Secondly, our traders, I have now realized, are a lot smarter than we thought because we are still continuing uh, fairly evenly and fairly normally because of stocks that they have had. Our hope and prayer is that uh, long before we run out of uh, these things, China will start manufacturing again. I think, I think the point is, it is true that China is a factory of the world and uh, the whole world feels it if something happens in China. But uh, the, on, the, the, other, we are, we, the other aspect of it is that we are also happy about what we are hearing about what the government of China is doing to restart manufacturing and start working again in, uh, in China. But in our case, in our case, part of the reason why we want to meet next week is to ask ourselves those very questions. What is the alternative source of some of the materials that we may be getting uh, from China? What does the government need to do to stimulate the economy in the face of this obvious economic, uh, economic uh, challenging situation that is facing us. So yes, that is why you had about all these series of meetings next week. We now want to receive, well, who is your going time. to handle this your one now? Yes. No, no, your time back. There's another one. Honorable, Honorable Minister. Where is this thing? It is I don't know where it is. Yeah. Honorable Minister. Yes, why, why don't we push it in front so that, um, why don't we have it in front? Yeah. Not, 
This is now an opportunity for the CDC US, which has been part of the development partners who have been very supportive to the Kenyan government in the support on the coronavirus and generally have been very supportive on matters of disease surveillance. They have given us uh, some protective equipment kits that are going to support this institution even as we set it up. And now we would like you to uh, symbolically receive the items from Mr. Chang representing the CDC US government. That is just a symbolic one. We have a large consignment that we have already received. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to leave again a couple of days. Give another hour. Thank you. Thank you. Turn the box away from the 